Hello and welcome back to Nuts on Cars. So today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, obviously with the current situation with Corona, um, we can't leave the house apart from essential trips. So any filming or anything like that that we have planned uh, can't happen, unfortunately. So we thought we'd do something from home and just run through what we think are the best uh, purchase you can make basically at different price points um, in the Porsche market as it stands. So price brackets are 10, 20, 40 and 70,000 pounds. And within those price points, we're going to talk through a daily option, a garage queen and a wildcard. Um, now, between us, we've owned quite a few Porsches, so hopefully we can bring some kind of uh, knowledge and advice in terms of where we think that the best money would be spent. So in terms of uh, the current market, obviously, these are based on what's out there at the moment on Piston Ed's Auto Trader. And things are a little bit strange. We don't know where the Porsche market is going to go. Um, we do think it's going to take a hit uh, with what's gone on. I think sort of especially toward the higher end of the Porsche market. I just think, um, yeah, I th think the investment days of sort of between 2012 and 2016 are, are gone. And really buying a Porsche to, to own because you love it rather than have it as an appreciating car sat in the garage. So there could be some bargains about, um, but these prices are based on today. So we'll talk through and we'll start at the 10,000 pounds mark. Um, so I've got some notes in front of me that I'm just going to run through and hopefully bring you some uh, some valid information. Um, Daily-wise, on the £10,000 mark, I would definitely pick a Porsche Boxster 987 um, manual. And at that sort of price point at the moment, you're going to get something that's got sort of 70,000 miles on. Um, we have owned one of these and they are brilliant. I mean, they are... They're more refined than a 986 um, version, so definitely a daily option. Um, and for these, I think rather than the options on the car, I think you've just got to be particular about the sort of condition, service history, owners on the car, that sort of stuff. So um, yeah, definite daily option, great fun, and for ten thousand pounds, what an option! Um, Garage Queen would would have to be a 996 C2 or C4. One of the early ones, the Gen 1, um, preferably with orange lights. So I just think they are starting to age really well. I mean, it is the ugly version, as everyone thinks, in the 9M range. But I think over time, they're just going to become a bit special. And uh, again, standard wheels, I think, look fine on those as well. Um, it's quite an understated sort of, sort of look. But I think you do have to be careful with these. They, they do potentially suffer with what, what we call 996-itis. Um, we've owned a Turbo, a C4S, and... They have their issues um, and it is a thing that they are a little bit sensitive. So especially the engines, you have to be careful with IMS and RMS work that's hopefully been done. Um, at that sort of price point, there's there's not many to choose from and you've got to be really careful. So go and have a look at them, check you're happy with sort of the, the overall condition. Hopefully it's had some money spent on it. It's been cared for over the years. Um, so yeah, for £10,000, I think that'd be a pretty cool garage queen option. Um, now, wildcard at the £10,000 price point, I stumbled across a Boxster 986S anniversary. So this is quite a special car. Um, they only built 1953 in the world, and it was to commemorate the 550 Spider from the 1953 Paris Motor Show. So for me, any Porsche that's sort of limited is special and at under £10,000, can't really complain. Things that it had on it, it had another eight horsepower, um, it had a sonically tuned exhaust is how they describe it, and 18 inch Carrera wheels. A lot of them are in GT silver, um, but yeah, they just look a bit bit different and you own, you own a car that obviously there's limited numbers and not many about, so for 10,000 pounds that, that has to be an option. And I think your money's pretty safe in one of those, even with the current situation. Um, so yeah, that's the 10,000 pound bracket. The 20,000 pound bracket now, for me as a daily, it would be a Boxster 981, 2.7, you're not going to get an S for that sort of money. PDK, just because it's easy and it's a brilliant gearbox. Um, there's only three on Auto Trader at the moment under that sort of price point, so you can't really be fussy on spec. Um, so it's more about, again, are you buying a straight car? Um, looks like you're going to get sort of 70,000 miles on the clock. Um, we've had one of these and it didn't cause any issues. Um, in the 12 months ownership, we had it. and. The only issue we did have was there was an issue with some of the wiring, but that's because the previous owner had garaged it and some mice had chewed through some wiring. So but other than that, it was bulletproof. Um, and I think they generally are. So I think it's a pretty sound investment um, and a beautiful sort of silky free revving engine. Um, so yeah, 
highly recommend one of those. Uh, Garage Queen, now this is one of my favorite Porsches at the moment. I've got a massive soft spot for these, which is the, the 996 C4S, um, preferably a coupe in manual. We've owned a Cabriolet Tiptronic, um, but yeah, for us looks wise, and that gearbox isn't the best in Tiptronics, a four speed, five speed, um, and it's just a bit slushy. So manual for us, sports exhaust would be nice, sports seats would be nice. Um, and again, you're looking at 80, 90,000 miles on one of these. So you've got to be really particular and look at quite a few cars and RMS, IMS bearing, that sort of stuff. Um, and just check what you're, what you're buying because there's not that many under the £20,000 mark. So they seem to be creeping up slightly. And I think, again, they're still going to creep up based on the current market situation. But yeah, love those. I think they're one of the best looking Porsches you can buy. So um, that's that. Wild card for me, it would be I stumbled across another special car. It's another Boxster. It's an RS60 987S. Uh, this one had 28,000 miles. There were 1,960 of these made. Um, a lot of them have got red leather, which I'm not so sure. I think it works because it's a limited edition. There's only black or red I think you could choose from inside. Um, and again, a lot of them are GT silver on the outside. So they had a little power upgrade, so another eight horsepower, taking it to 303. Um, they have PASM and sports exhaust, and they were five and a half thousand pounds more than a standard S at the time when they were built. So again, limited numbers, again, a pretty sound investment and just a bit, a bit special. Uh, so that's that's the £20,000 mark. Uh, now we move on to the 40000 Now this is where it gets really exciting because there's a lot to choose from. Um, so I sort of put down what I think are the best. Um, so daily driver would be a 718 Cayman S PDK. Now, potentially that's a bit um, controversial with it being a four cylinder, but we have a Boxster S 718 and it is brilliant. It's potentially more fun than the 981, the straight six, because it's just faster, it's more, if you just go down a country lane, it, the power is so usable. Um, okay, it's not quite as pure being a four cylinder, but the engines, is so good, it really is. Um, you're gonna get one that's done about 20, 30,000 miles, and something I would be tempted with would be a Litchfield remap option, which is takes it up to 430 horsepower, which in a Cayman would be ridiculous. So. That sounds pretty exciting to me and I would like, and I think you can be quite fussy at this price bracket for these because they seem to have, they seem to be catching the 981 in price, even though they're kind of two or three years younger. So are they going to keep depreciating? Hard to say. Um, with it being a four cylinder, it doesn't seem to be as desirable. So, but options I'd want, PASM, um, 20 inch wheels, Bose, sports exhaust, extended leather, sport chrono, and the limited slip diff, so it could probably deal with the 430 horsepower that you're potentially gonna put through it. Um, but that sounds pretty exciting to me. So moving on to the Garage Queen. Um, for me, it would need to be a 993 C2 or C4, um, tip or manual. Um, I know the Tiptronic is a not very good gearbox. I think it's four speed in those, but for me buying that car just because of the look and the ownership of it. Um, it's not a car that you're gonna go and freight around the country lanes um, anyway. It's it's a car that you would just go out for a Sunday drive in. So tip or manual doesn't really bother me that much. You are gonna be looking at 100,000 mile plus at this sort of price point. Um, and for me, it has to have cup alloys, aircon for the summer drives. Um, and yeah, I really love those in midnight blue guards red with the light interior, but again, Depends how you're gonna to have to be patient if you're looking for specific spec because there's not that many out there. Um, so yeah, I just think they're gorgeous. Um, Wildcard wise, I would look at the 996 Turbo. Uh, again, probably one of, well, the least loved turbos in the range because it's got the fried egg headlights, but they came out in 2000, so I was nine, and it's kind of a poster car for me. And the wide body, the, the wheels, the, there's just something special about it and they're, they seem quite, aff not affordable, but they seem quite, compared to all the other turbos, they, they seem to be priced the best. Um, one sold recently on collecting cars for £22,000, so there's some bargains around for these. You're going to be about 60,000 miles. Again, I would love sports seats, got to be manual, got to be coupe. Um, we have owned one of these and they are, I remember the first time we ran out on the test drive and I still swear it was the one of the fastest cars we've ever, I've, I've ever been in. It was just ridiculous, especially for its time. 
0 to 60, I think it's 3.9 seconds. They are bonkers. Um, so yeah, that would be my choice as a wild card at £40,000. Uh, we move on, £70,000. Now this was quite a difficult decision. Um, there's obviously quite a few choices to choose from. So, but I settled on a Cayman 4 litre GTS, the new one. Uh, you can get one of those for, with a few options for just under £70,000. Um, it was between that and the GT4, but as a daily, I think the GT4, the clutches are quite heavy um, and they are a bit more over the top than the GTS. So, and the write-ups seem to say that the 4 litre GTS is, it's not got all the fancy GT bits on it, suspension wise and things, but it's, it's pretty close and it gives it a good run for its money. So yeah, that would have to be my choice as a daily. Garage Queen, um, I stumbled across a 911 3.2 Super Sport Coupe from 1986. Um, now they got turbo suspension, brakes, wheels, and a turbo body, but with the standard 3.2 Carrera engine. There's only 226 in the UK, so it's a very limited number production car, um, and just is so, so special um, and yeah, stunning. So that, uh, that would have to be my choice on one of those. Um, and the wild card finally, at this price point, would be a 996 Gen 2 GT3. This car seems to go under the radar a little bit really in terms of the GT3s. It's a bit more understated than any of the others. Um, again, the fried headlights, is it as loved? There's two on Auto Trader at this price point. Um, and I imagine I've never been out in one, but they're totally different to a standard 996. So at the end of the day, it's still a GT car for under 70,000 um, pounds. So yeah, we um, that's where Kind of, I think the money is best spent. Um, there are many different options, so let us know what you think you would buy at this sort of price point, because um, we just love to talk Porsches, basically. So uh, yeah, give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, if you want to see some more of these kind of videos on different topics, um, and yeah, subscribe if you want to see any more, and we'll see you in the next one.